Yellow, Ralph McIntyre here from Astro Map Links. Well, Jupiter went into Capricorn. Seems like everyone and their mother wants to do a video on this one. So at least I'm not someone's mother, so I guess I must be everyone. Hmm. Well, this is probably going to be a bit of a long video in Jupiter's honor. You know, go big or go home as far as Jupiter's concerned. It's largely because we need to kind of do a little backstory, to, in my opinion, to understand the evolutionary intent of Jupiter entering into Capricorn. And so kind of where I want to step back to is Neptune. And I want to step back to evolution, the process of evolution, the belief system called evolution. And if you believe you're evolving, then I believe you believe that you're going in a certain direction, which is God realized. So Neptune right now is in Pisces. And anytime Neptune's in Pisces, the concept of God realization is on the menu. And so to understand all of the other current transits, in my opinion, you really need to sit back and really ask your quest this question. Are you a physical being having a spiritual experience? Or are you a spiritual being having a physical experience? Because if you are a spiritual being having a physical experience, getting back to God realization is where we're going. Neptune and Pisces. So I don't want to get too deep into this because otherwise this video will go on forever. So, but I just want to kind of speak to, and I'll probably turn this into a video series and get deeper into the subject. But Neptune is in Pisces. Both of those are our connection to the divine. It's that God voice coming through. And as Neptune ruling the 12th house, and Pisces ruling the 12th house, and Jupiter ruling the ninth house, there's a square forming from the 9th to the 12th. And, and Jupiter has a big part to play in Pisces being, or Neptune being in Pisces. Because in my opinion, Jupiter is um, the planet that represents how we turn that Neptune, that Pisces energy into the physical. You know, it's like that planet that they claim that you're lucky. But before I drive drop too much into Jupiter, I, I want to kind of step back and talk about some of the other transits because I think that they're very significant in understanding what this transit means to all of us. And that is everything happening in Capricorn. So I have a bunch of videos on this. You can kind of look back in my YouTube channel. Um, but I want to talk briefly about Pluto, Saturn, and the South Node all hanging out in Capricorn. They were, for the summer, they were retrograded all together kind of in Capricorn. Um, so in my opinion, most astrologers are kind of getting this, this transit wrong. They're kind of looking at the traditional sense of Capricorn and what that means. And um, in my opinion, that's wrong. And let me explain why. So first of all, the first hint was the south node of the moon. Anytime you're dealing with the south node of the moon, you're dealing with the karma that didn't go well. So with Jupiter, or excuse me, with, with the south node of the moon conjunct Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, and because Saturn rules Capricorn, we have to look at this from the, the viewpoint of how are we doing it wrong? So from a societal point of view, how are we doing Capricorn wrong? How are we doing Saturn wrong? 
And then Pluto, bringing Pluto in there is also like deeply into the subconscious. So back to the Neptune in Pisces. The God realization. So Saturn rules our ability to get things done over a long period of time. It's like the one step leads to the next step leads to the next step. Saturn. You know, delayed satis or gratification. Looking at the big picture. That's Saturn at its purity. It's really, Saturn at its purity is to actualize Jupiter and Pisces and Neptune's vision. That's Saturn at its purity. So, when people are kind of worried about Jupiter and Capricorn, it's like if you go back to the old Capricorn, if you go back to the South Node Capricorn, and, and in my opinion where Capricorn kind of goes astray or where people use Capricorn energy and kind of go astray is the worry. It's the fear. It's like, oh, I need to put my nose to the grindstone because I don't believe in the universe providing what I need. I have to, you know, prepare for the future. I have to stick it out in this job that's killing me. All these things that are based off of fear. Because from a God realization perspective, there's nothing to fear. So, any of your structures that are based off of fear, in my opinion, probably came under super attack this summer with the retrograde, Saturn, Pluto, and the South Node. It's like it was an opportunity to look at all the things that are holding you back from being the ultimate. Remember, the ultimate transit is this Neptune Pisces, God realization. And so the more you really step back and start looking at it from that perspective and start really breathing into the possibilities, because that's Jupiter, go big or go home. And Neptune in Pisces is kind of, you know, limitless. Pisces, Neptune, limitless. The, the possibilities are endless. So, I'm kind of rambling on a little bit. I hope people are following me. So, back to this transit that happened this summer. The Pluto, Saturn, South Node. Because I feel like this is going to help us understand Capricorn from the perspective of Jupiter entering in this. From the perspective of that Pisces and Neptune, God realization. So we have to really kind of look back to both all of the things that didn't go well. All of the things were fear-based, but also the subconscious because Pluto's there. And so, if you start to look at what got lit up this summer, when that retrograde period happened, you know, where your fear was, where your anxiety was, where you were focused on, what you were looking at, all the things that kind of lit you up, the friendships, the arguments, the relationships, and you kind of try to boil them down to where their similarities are, you'll start to get the window into the subconscious, because the subconscious means that it's hidden from you. You know, so it, it needs to be, it's kind of like looking around the corner. It's kind of like adding up a bunch of different things and then you get to see it. It's also about being really clear, um, focused, and allowing yourself to know the wisdom. Because that Neptune in Pisces, really, all the wisdom is right there. It's always right there. We are all God realized. Remember that. So if you kind of look at what happened this summer, that's going to help you kind of understand where you are using fear, the fear aspect of Capricorn that holds you back. Where are you staying and doing things that don't work for you? Where are you letting the subconscious wounds control you? 
<coughs> excuse me. Those probably all got lit up this summer. And so part of what's happening is within with astrology, the thing that I love most about astrology is the, the beautifulness of it, is it kind of walks you down a pathway. One transit prepares you for the next, prepares you for the next, prepares you for the next. So the, the big transits that are going to hit us all is this Pluto-Saturn conjunction in Capricorn. I'm going to say sometime in January. Uh, don't quote me on that. You can look it up on Google. There's probably a thousand people who will tell you the exact dates. Um, so all these transits are kind of preparing us. The Jupiter entering into Capricorn is preparing us for this next transit. The stars, the universe wants us to succeed. It gives us all the tools we need. All we need to do is do our best to work with them. So if you focus on a bunch of the stuff that got lit up this summer, if you kind of try to get down to the core of it, it's going to help you understand this latest transit, which is Jupiter entering into Capricorn. So I want to talk a little bit about Jupiter, better understand, better explain what Jupiter is. Especially in regards to the Neptune and Pisces. Because in my opinion, that's what Jupiter is. Jupiter is the part that actually physical, turns the Neptune and Pisces energy into the physical. It's that whisper from God, spoken from that Jep Jupiter um, Sagittarius king-like voice, I know. It, but it was the whisper from God. It's that Neptune whisper into the solid, grounded wisdom, knowledge of Jupiter. Go big or go home. You know, people always say Jupiter's lucky, and it's like Jupiter's not really lucky. Jupiter just knows what's possible. Jupiter says, hey, this is a gold mine up here, Neptune and Pisces. Everything you can ever imagine is sitting there waiting for you to actualize. That's Jupiter's viewpoint. Whatever you can imagine you can actualize is Jupiter. Go big, go home. Supersize that. So, if you sit back and you kind of just digest that, you breathe into all that and allow that just to kind of come into your psyche. You know, and it's funny because I'm sure a lot of you, just like me, have been spiritual most of your life and you've been hearing all this new age mumbo jumbo and all these voices and everyone saying all this stuff. And, and one of the things that I keep on coming back to is you create your own reality and, and what that really means. It's like you create your own reality. It's like what if there was just a big period, like a wall after that? There was no butts after it. And then you start to jump into back into that Jupiter energy. It's like, okay, so go big, go home. What can you imagine? What can you imagine? Could it actually be actualized? Could you actually bring it down into the planet and make it happen? Well... I don't know about you, but any time I want to actualize something, any time I really want to make something happen, I call my friend. My best buddy when it comes to making shit happen. And I'm not talking Mars, I'm talking Saturn, Capricorn. Because in my opinion, people give Saturn such a bad rap. It's like this evil Mr. Time, Father Time, society structure, you know, the patriarch or all this nonsense. It's like, no, that's not Saturn. At Saturn's pure core, it's like, oh, I see what you're talking about, Jupiter. Let's make that happen. Let's put my nose to the grindstone. Let's me focus all my energy. Let me stay God knowing that I can make that happen. 
and make it happen. And that's Saturn. That's Capricorn. It's not fear. It's not like, what should I fear? It's what can I actually accomplish if I put my mind to it? Saturn, Capricorn energy. So, sorry for getting so intense. I get kind of fired up, passionate when I start talking about this stuff. When you, when you kind of sit with all of this, you kind of sit back and you think about the God realization. You think about all the stuff that got lit up over the summer. I suspect you're like me that a lot of stuff got lit up. There's super powerful energy to look at and understand that happened when Pluto, Saturn, and um, the South Node were uh, going retrograde. And this is where it kind of is really important to kind of look at your own chart to help you understand how to kind of turn this personal. So one of the things I would suggest, first of all, is look at to where your Saturn is and what sign it is. Also, where your Jupiter is and what sign it is and house. Pluto and your south node. And your north node. Because the North Node is where you're going. And right now the North Node is in Cancer. And interestingly speaking, when, when you step back and you kind of look at the great things that have happened in the life, in this world, they really kind of come down to irrationally following some passionate idea you had which is, that's that heart. Follow your heart. Um, so your moon, what, what, what emotionally fires you up? You know, where are you going? You know, you look at your Jupiter, can I kind of help you understand where you're underestimating yourself? Where you need to kind of go big or go home? And so the more you can kind of sit with that, you look at Jupiter entering into Capricorn. And rather than dropping into fear, get excited. The possibility of what you could create if you put your mind to it. I suspect everyone that's watching this video has something that they want to manifest in the world, but don't feel like they can. Jupiter and Capricorns, like you can. Go for it. What do you got to lose? God realization that Neptune and Pisces, remember. Because here's the deal. Going back to Jupiter at its core, Jupiter is the way God, that Piscean, Neptune energy, the div divine source, puts that whisper into our head, and then Jupiter comes in and actualizes it. So when you look at Jupiter and Capricorn, see it as the God's voice, divine spirit's voice giving you a project to put your teeth into. Focus on. And so you're probably asking, okay, so how do I hear Divine Spirit's voice? Well, that's really simple. Listen to your heart. Your heart pretty much speaks Divine Spirit's voice. God actuated voice. Follow your passion. Don't let the fear, don't let the subconscious get in your way. Go big or go home, Jupiter and Capricorn. I'm just kind of thinking about anything else I want to add to this video. I know it's getting a little long, but... Yeah, I think the really important is to kind of really look at your birth chart because your birth chart is going to really help you understand what this means for you.
where you're supposed to go big or go home. Where God wants you to enact his or her will onto the planet. <clears throat> That's what it's all about. Listening to the calling. Doing that divine source work. You know, it's going to be an interesting year with Saturn and Pluto. <clears throat> Especially if you're in the United States or you're paying attention to the politics, politics of the United States. Unfortunately, they're trying to force feed us fear. They're trying to divide us with fear. They're trying to rule us with fear. But they didn't really realize, or maybe they did. Maybe this is the, this is the balance between the Neptune and Pisces, what's happening up above and below. There's nothing to fear when you're God realized. When you open up, you let go of the fear, you connect your heart up into the divine, every answer you need will be there. Jupiter and Capricorn are there to help you. It's time for us all to, to listen to the call. Stop listening to the fear. Stop complaining. Start taking action. Start using this powerful energy. When Pluto and Saturn hit, you know, people are afraid of that. And it's like, I'm kind of excited for it. I know it's going to be an intense ride. I know it's going to make my little monkey main, my brain go crazy. But Pluto's the powerhouse of the Zodiac. It really, it's like it wants you to, to really be big. Jupiter's like not, compared to Pluto, Jupiter, I mean, ex, excuse me. Pluto really wants that pure, true power to come out of you. It's really a powerful, good ally. It's that friend that wants, that's willing to tell you the hard things to get you on track of what you're capable of. All right, well, I know I kind of went long, and I hope I didn't kind of ramble on too bad, but I hope you enjoy this video. This is Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Hope you have a fabulous new year.